This week I spoke with Senator Mike Braun about Trump's growing influence in the party, not only on the campaign trail, but also in the immigration debate. Senator Braun, who's backing Trump, is skeptical of the potential immigration deal with the Biden administration, while others, like Senator Todd Young, who isn't endorsing Trump, says it would be, quote, tragic if the negotiations got held up for campaign purposes, as they seem to be held up now. Here's part of my conversation with Senator Braun about that bipartisan deal with President Biden and why he's against it. Why would we do a deal that uh, is going to be helping him and it's baselining illegal uh, immigrant uh, entries at a level that would be five, six, maybe up to 10 times what it was before? I think it's silly, especially when our apparent nominee and the House of Representatives won't go anywhere with this kind of bill to actually put it into law. And obviously, as President Trump gains momentum in the primary, he continues to gain more and more influence in Congress. This week, though, Senator Romney said he thinks the border is an important issue for Trump. And he said the fact that he would communicate to Republican senators and Congress people that he doesn't want us to solve the border problem because he wants to blame Biden for it is appalling in his words. What's your response to that? Well, I don't think those two have ever gotten along, so I would discount that comment uh, accordingly. Um, it is apparent, and if the one thing about Trump, he is communicative, and we see that and hear it. Most senators have not been contacted uh, by him. Uh, I think it's not hard just on the merits of the case. Have it, you talked to him about this issue? No, I have not. And uh, most senators have not. Speaking of President Trump, his win in New Hampshire this week does seem to have more Republicans backing him now in Congress and on the campaign trail, including some of your opponents in the race for governor who've now endorsed him or been more vocal about their support for the former president. How much of a factor will that be in 2024? And what's your response to those developments this week? Well, I think it's now over half of Republican senators. And I think for some, they're going to just read the tea leaves. And uh, President Trump, uh, with all the um, challenges and complications that he is dealing with, has gotten stronger among mainstream Republicans. And I know many don't like his style or his approach, uh, like the policies. So you've got to straddle that. All I can tell you is that when you're looking at what's happened dramatically, just through Iowa, uh, what's going to happen in Nevada in a few days, uh, what happened in New Hampshire, uh, it's not going to be hard to extrapolate after South Carolina that it's a foregone conclusion. All right, part of my interview there with Senator Braun. After Trump's win Tuesday, we saw an endorsement from one of Braun's opponents in the race for governor, Lieutenant Governor Suzanne Crouch. In a statement, she said President Trump's victory in New Hampshire is a testament to his popularity and resilience. She said we need a president who grows the economy, not our list of enemies, and said all Republicans need to unite behind the next president, Donald Trump. In response, Braun said Republicans in Indiana and around the country are uniting behind him to defeat Biden. And he said it was, quote, sad Crouch couldn't utter the words that she endorses Trump for president, but he said even worse that other opponents, Brad Chambers and Eric Doden, quote, won't even say his name. Now, in response to Braun, Doden said, I supported Trump in 2016 and 2020, and I'll support him in 24 because someone has to actually back the blue and clean up the messes in Washington that you never could, directing his comments there to the senator. So amidst all of that, this week, the Republican candidates for governor squared off in a public forum Thursday night near Indy, put on by the First Principles Forum to talk about the dynamics at play and the issues they'd prioritize as governor. Five Republicans, among those vying to be Indiana's next governor, including a sitting senator, our current lieutenant governor, former attorney general, and two former economic development leaders. And on the economy, the candidates are putting forth different plans with different approaches. We eliminate our state income tax. We put money in your pocket, and we make Indiana a no-income tax state where people want to stay, people want to move. Economic growth is important but not at the cost of who we are. It shouldn't be the heavy hand of the state coming in and picking winners and losers and saying, we're gonna compete with the locals. I do think it makes sense that you're gonna to try to target economic development only if it's felt and done across the state. And our strategy in the past has been to go after large projects that even bring in more employment when the real situation we have today is the attraction and retention of talent. I believe 
in, a, in an aggressive, offensive strategy to grow our economy, to lift people up. People, quality of life is better when they are financially secure. Meantime, on the issue of education, several candidates said they'd consider the idea of shifting funding for parents to make it easier to send their kids to private schools. As governor, I'll make sure that parents control what's being taught to our children. We need to do something about our school system. We need to tear it down and get back to basics. If we don't do something different, don't expect the results to be different. We have a constitutional obligation to educate our children, and I think we have a moral obligation to educate our children with excellence. We've made good progress um, as it relates to choice in Indiana and making sure that families have choice of their educational uh, journey, but we, need, we can continue to do more. All right, meantime, this week, Eric Doden was the first candidate to officially file for the race. That process includes collecting 500 verified signatures from each of the state's congressional districts. Unclear if all the candidates have done so yet. We'll keep you posted. Also this week, abortion back in the news amidst Indiana's March for Life, which was held Monday on the 51st anniversary of Roe v. Wade. Lieutenant Governor Crouch was there as well and spoke with those who gathered at the State House. I cast a tie-breaking vote to toughen our abortion laws. And today, Indiana is one of the most pro-life states in the country. At that same event, Attorney General Todd Rokita was also among those who spoke at the March for Life. We will be with you. We will win. We need to turn this into a cultural life. It's only you and it's only us together that can make this unthinkable. That same day, one of Rokita's potential opponents this year, Destiny Wells, was side by side with Dr. Caitlin Bernard at an event honoring Dr. Bernard, who made national news after providing an abortion for a young rape victim from Ohio who came here instead in the aftermath of new abortion laws. Bernard, of course, also faced criticism from the attorney general, who in turn has faced backlash from the state Supreme Court's disciplinary commission as a result of his comments about the doctor. Meantime, this week, the president and vice president both held events calling for abortion rights to be restored after many states, including Indiana, restricted most abortions in the wake of the Supreme Court's Dobbs decision two years ago. Stop playing politics with the women's lives and freedom. Let doctors do their job. The government should not be telling her what to do with her body. Indiana's new abortion law restricts most abortions with few exceptions. It took effect last year after a ruling by the state Supreme Court. Meantime, this week at the State House, lawmakers discussed the issue of child care and the possibility of a new tax credit. State House reporter Hannah Adamson takes a closer look at that issue and what both sides are saying now. Republic